Hello friends, welcome, Pat here. Hope you have been well. Let's get straight into today's tech talk. I have a lot of info to go through and I'm hoping to cover today's topic in a fairly efficient way. So, Wi-Fi 6, what is it? Why have we been hearing about it and why should you even bother with it? Well, Wi-Fi 6 is the next generation of Wi-Fi. Fairly simple concept. This generation includes a numbering system and this will show up on your device to let you know what generation of Wi-Fi you are connected to. So it might be four, five or six and maybe even one or two, but I'll leave those out. And look, the idea of Wi-Fi hasn't changed. It is still the same basic thing. It helps your wireless devices connect to your home network and in turn to the World Wide Web. But now this is all happening with more technology packed into the same box, making that happen more efficiently, speeding up connections in the process too. So let's start with speed. The potential speed for Wi-Fi 6 is 9.6 gigabits per second. That's up from 3.5 gigabits on the Wi-Fi 5. Even though before we didn't even know that it was Wi-Fi 5, it's been quite a few years between each major release. We have Wi-Fi 4, which was in uh, the 802.11.n standard, released in 2009. And most recently, the Wi-Fi 5 with the 802.11ac standard released in 2014. And now later this year, Wi-Fi 6. And if we jump a little way back, Wi-Fi 1 was released in 1999. So for speed-wise, expect a 40% improvement in the speed for a single device. Thanks, Wi-Fi 6. Now, the way this is achieved is pretty cool. Using better encoding methods and algorithms, the new Wi-Fi 6 chips are able to use the standard 2.4 GHz or the 5 GHz wavelengths more efficiently, resulting in higher throughput, so don't expect top speeds to go up as much, but overall speeds for multiple devices will go up. And this is a good thing, so thanks Wi-Fi 6. Basically, more data is packed into the same radio wave stream, and the chip that encodes and decodes these signals keeps getting more powerful and can handle the extra work, and do it all that much more efficiently. Now, for those with the devices that still use the 2.4 GHz standards, and don't laugh because there are still plenty of devices that do, Wi-Fi 6 will increase speeds on the 2.4 GHz network. Now, even though the industry has moved on to the 5 GHz network, Wi-Fi for less interference, 2.4 GHz is still better at penetrating solid objects and distances. Also to note, your microwave and other electrical radio devices should now cause much less issues or interference with your home network. Thanks, Wi-Fi 6. So, apart from faster speeds, what can we look forward to in Wi-Fi 6? Well, now more than ever, there are many more Wi-Fi devices, from little GoPro cameras to your security cameras to a fridge and Dyson fan and everything in between. There are so many little Wi-Fi devices in your home that the radio wave space is getting cluttered and busy. Wi-Fi 6 brings with its most important improvement and that's better performance in dense and busy environments. Those living in apartments will flock to buy Wi-Fi 6 devices for sure. Those tech heads with heaps of toys in the house too. Expect a four times improvement in stability and speed in congested situations as per the Intel specs that I'll link in the description below. In the end, what this means for the average user is less fiddling about with channels and power settings, expect more out of the box experience and less setup. Also expect the feature of automated signal switching to go from a 2.4 to a 5 GHz uh, connection when suitable or vice versa to make a triumphant return and actually work well. This feature has worked in the past but not as well as you'd expect. The spec also contains battery life improvements for other Wi-Fi 6 devices with the ability to tell the device to wake when there is a new data to transfer. Something that in my opinion and experience will not make much of a difference uh, because for example, Windows laptops, there's always some sort of update to download and it all does it in the background. Thanks, Microsoft. But in saying that, smaller devices with much smaller batteries could potentially get some benefit from this feature. Now then, that all sounds really groovy, right? Wrong. Wi-Fi generation relies on new hardware, not just software updates. So you'll need to buy new phones, laptops, and so on to get the new version of Wi-Fi. So what now? Do you pause this video, run to the shops, and buy new gear? Wrong again. A lot of the devices haven't even hit the mainstream yet. It's just not that game-changing of an update for any single device 
expect many more devices to drop in 2020. On the router side, we have products out of the TP-Link camp. We've got ASUS, we've got Netgear, a very small handful of products, less than five, that actually support Wi-Fi 6. Then device-wise, so far I have found the new Samsung Note 10, which just recently got released, to have the chip, and you can purchase an add-on card for both PC and laptop, though software compatibility is a bit shady. In saying that, how do you know if a device is Wi-Fi 6 compatible? Well, all you need to do, and always look for that friendly little sticker, Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi 6 certificate on the box of your product. You won't be digging around through the spec sheets and trying to remember whether 802.11ac or 802.11ax is the latest standard. The device manufacturer can say it has Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi 5, which will be nice. Things have gotten a lot simpler these days, especially for the consumer. So you can really get your head around this and make educated decisions. You'll also start seeing Wi-Fi certified logo on devices that have gone through the Wi-Fi Alliance certification process. Previously, there was a Wi-Fi certified logo that didn't tell you what generation a product was from unless you looked at those specifications. So there we have Wi-Fi 6, an improvement that will be around for another six to seven years. Friends, thank you very much for watching. Hope this has been educational to you. If so, leave a like or a comment and consider subscribing for more content like this. Thanks, and I'll catch you guys in another one. Bye.